we'll go ahead and get started. Hi everybody, I'm Steve Carl. Welcome to week 16 or 17 of the uh, coronavirus apocalypse extravaganza poetry reading series. Uh, hope everybody's uh, been taking good care of their mental and emotional and physical health and doing the best you can to help those around you with the same. Um, so today I'm going to read a selection of poems that were uh, that I wrote in 1993, so more than half my life ago now. Um, the beginning part of that year in the spring, I was writing my master's thesis at New College of California. So some of these poems were written when I was still a student. And um, so I was still on the upside of my learning curve <laughs> as a developing poet. And uh, so um, one of the things I noticed when I was going through um, selecting poems for this is that these uh, poems still have a lot of um, emotional rawness to them because um, I was still somewhat in the grip of adolescent drama <laughs> at that age. So, um, But I think the poetry wins out in the end, so we'll play it out and see what you folks think. So the first one's called Faux Pas. The walk to the store nearly performed, an inappropriate persona smashes through the mold from behind inside that framing space, laying waste to claims of continuity. With stability's ignition comes a recognizable fracture wading through the murk of eyes, bundles of light swirl out into air, apparently bent on debacle, erasing the gunpowder trail, memories left turning in or at its wake. Arise, O oh subself, ascend in his place, these men regurgitating one another starve Narcissus. It is this that breaks the ironic hip hiding the lazy face of play. And speaking of narcissists, this one creates a, a hybrid mythical figure. Uh, it's called Star of Narcissus. And it starts with an epigram from Hamlet. I could be bounded in a nutshell and count myself a king of infinite space were it not that I have bad dreams. In this I-solar system, a product of panic transformed into diminishment, the noun, this first person, face down, archidomic, the accomplished cosmos, I, solar system, Solipse's sun and star of Narcissus, awake to the decay of utterance all within me, leaving silence inside, banished of alterity and tire. The boulder outside, spilled out through my brow full blown, pushed as persona by broken day, rolled back, paranoiac, Come fallen milk bottled night. Each channel remote and unreceived on other pathways, left to me is this negate openness. Heavy tongue, bleary lips attempt, I solace shun. I solar system, my own devices, one pointing star of Narcissus.
long afternoons. The prolix tautly finally retires, tightly intimating a recession of motives, imitates all its own mouth motors, a writing that corrective engagement. Insufferable, invigorating, its contagion lies loose like flies cannon shot, its jargon lazy subverted to sex. I slip to lower erg level, train the apparition to the outworks of its appearance. We live lives in lost days, arranging latent the powers of paucity. Eternal. Wan and tan nobility berated by the journey. How brittle must it be for breakthrough? To stand aside, to let the matter speak which is in question. Sun-crushed skin is in its weak way impaled by the melting salve. A desert rises into play, the thinking of the thing o'erleaps. Where once was word, now world awakes, reviving viscera. Kinesis and vision recombinant string new strands. Some ontic sinew stretches, points. This one's called Potential Poem. Potential is a plastic pitcher into which you want me to pour myself. I hold out for an earthen vessel. I will lift me into the air, withheld. Then draw me forth like rain to soak the roots of this errant tree. Do not collect me. I will only rattle your refrigerator. There's probably some plums in that refrigerator too. remembered by its first word. Coupling, brace yourselves for redundancy. I am ascendant, my rising signs sing. They float off the page and strike the gods helpless. A drastic infatuation captures me. To delay the solidity of horizon, we wade in sol gel transformation. Lingual dialectic or dichotomy, ambered or aspect in uttering. Wetly we digress. You pick a tomato. I revision St. Augustine. But you have said the desert already before. I tell you I forgot it and must recount each grain by grain. Epic expanse of sand. Untoweled, your hair leaves dark marks pressed to your shirt back. Tied, the belt of beach leaves the mountainous belly. The sea-wide inseam is tailored to worlding. This one's called efficacious wanderings in the void or a cornucopia of nothing. A, lit up blank like that fusive bulb of fire, empty shine hiding spectral like fusion, reclaiming colors with the hook of the half wit. B, there is an event Escaping scan, it leaves poetry to page. It leaps through reading to happenly sudden. C. Any one could be she whom poetry stole through your crazy amazement, and you would never get over her, never get over here, where song plays off the lips of life. The syntax of houses holds its structure lumbering backbone of the coiled city. D. You lift all no into assent with a firm sense of the second's chasm, 
the hour's abyss. You span time with this yes's timid space, the curious doubling of moon sight. E, we test the line, but as fisher or fish. Concatenating incantations sequester relativity, environ low summer bells and mourn-filled moistnesses of grass. Together gathers us up in it, awakens sunshine-sharp drip of light in the pan. Replace this cold cheek, still salted with eye rain, dance thoughtfully to the sandstoned sea. Muted Barricade. Behind Muted Barricade, have I waited time enough? The corridor's corrosion cleaned from inside some insidious division. Solo, I locate our pockmarked discourse lying and trailed. Look, tiny fish swim in the puddles. But I am not this amphibian, air, earth, water, mud, I cannot let them enter me in series. To breathe, I must break down this dam and drown into dream, divested, deranged. Rage. This rage of intangibles touch flame to the form of me, an integral distancing awaits my open turn, tunes me into surf, which aches for shore, beats unceasing, heart into its sand. Oh, the angst. This one's called Muscle Spasms. The opening should be painstaking. I mean it should stake pain as well as take pains. My pain is at stake when my pains are not taken. The worm stays in the storm, broke me open to placate me. Unawake and your voice slowly fillets me. My asymmetry shows up as a blue streak. Focus on the little cowering god. That avatar Spider-Man trapped in the thunder room. The tundra truncates tree lines. Measures the tilt of the silt. Hear a halt in my heart when you're heard in the hall. Then I'm enthralled in throes of threadedness. Panned out in postponement mistaking pain. Fragrance radiates away. This means from sylph-like syllables of smell we hear a garden speak. But does it sh its speech speed past supersonic? No. Synesthesia eludes each explanatory urge. That last word disengages. The syntax cannot hold. I myself am this infatuated fog, a stratus cloud strafing the equinox, a cumulus accumulating white water at the solar plexus, also that nimbus nimbly awaiting the collusion of song and flight, as swan in the winter different. Brace me, is speech of this allowed? Can I write it out curving on space? Order it up in waves after wave, scooped up in the shell of the nearest ears? Three dimensions are enough to form a rough complexity with a symmetry unsympathetic to the two. Hold webbed in, re 
held, webbed, and relating like sticky molecules, malnourished and flushing red with shame and pride, untimed and lapping over the petri dish's edge. That's a swing around its issue, its dark nucleus awake with pulsing pressures. Check arch archangels in closing. Are they clarified? Or is their clarion call a blur of cirrus? Find me in the shadows of each letter. I grin in each E, glare out from the capital M. Let a poetics promise transport to and fro. This environment obviates it. You have wasted instantiation. An invitee, we welcome your reentry. But look, the waves of, sorry, but look, the wings of the messengers apply, reply, and multiply. The words fall into fold or invaginate in any instant awaiting only their uncertain rebirth. This one's called Becoming. I dedicated it to the, um, the writer Clarice Lispector. It was inspired by one of her books that I was reading. A walker into void, she avoids overbecoming herself, crossing over into star-crossed lovers among oceanic modalities, each footfall years ago, caressing the humus and being no notion of being. She steps wholly into human. A garden blooms in the wake of her desire. This one's called Investigations. It's in two parts. Um, it was published in a uh, an English small press uh, journal called Terrible Work. <laughs> I always love the name. <laughs> Very punk. <laughs> um, I, I sent them a few things and they, they published a couple different um, submissions of mine over the years, but this was, the, I think this one must have been the first one. Investigation narrows off as into concerning field. One, belittle the caretaker, sweep the epiphany from out the lawn, awaken the miro. The early diner, unspaced by openness, camps me out. I await a thorough break with it all, blue sail my tent attempting to rekindle me inside. I retain my context like thin skin wading through wax. I am mired in waning. A soft voice fades in through wires. Miles melt secretly. Into trace we come slipping, trans-like offering gods up to each other. Alleluia to the reciprocal, celebrating the wounding of human chaos whose blood is structure, whose bones are dwelling, articulated a latent precipice with cliff and fall. Two, a cadence sometimes dies between dreams, an empty green bottle lolling on the walk. By this name, I rise out of the nothing to join you. This furious display, that indiscreet contraption wakes the counterpoint. You enthrall me in throes of threadedness, panning out into a postponing of purpose. The arms encircle nothing. The eye's radiance opens only elsewhere, flickering indifferent when I'm outside the glass. Simple and regressive, I fall back on you, each time breaking new little bones in each of us. Any severance suffices, will intoxicate me on my own, with alone, with later delayed. It's longer to wait.
Who fell to my scathing indictment of me? Pull me out of my outstanding a minute and melt me. Breathe relics of dust, my love, and force face to the rations of rationale. I've relinquished liaisons for less. Now the minute commiserations are ours. The strangeness decays and you there, you bore through me. I hardly know what I feel until I read about it later. The letters fill me in where I am outlined. Crunched caricatures proceed. They predicate me through myopic passageways to breathe. This one is called Represencing the Muse. Symphonic prana circles the body's ocean, waving breath into being with the fluid blossoming of a subtle fruit. Its force flows a course across through nets of nesting nerves. A presence arisen horizontally collects the rest, insinuates itself into the syntax of sinew and orchestrates a new muse. It blurs a blue swerve into verve. My swaying strays Rorschach's course. Swing oblivion's ball on a string. Fling each sphere of space estranged before us. If you jump, hold on to the sky, dripping moon wax. We'll glow faces erasing fields grown fallow. Travesty's Wave. Travesty's Wave opens the nightmare to devastation's wake. We weary of the swimming weak and its effluvium. Sick. This commentary strains already to the elemental. Momentous, secondary, minutia elucidate the available. And what cannot avail us remains awash in the consciousness which a sleep in us hangs ten on the last board of score or surf. A transient caress attunes the time string. Your attention protends toward portent, melodious, seraphic, unspoken. So by the end of the year, I had started doing yoga on a regular basis. Um, so that's starting to creep into the poems. So this is, uh, I have two more. Um, the next to the last one here is called Dilemmas in Meditation, parts one and two. And uh, I don't know, this doesn't really make any difference in the reading, but um, just if you read this on the page, it's actually in two columns. So I'll read the first column first. The strict instructions of instinct distract each self-abstraction, erasing every obstacle. They caress embedded Latinate, but flower above its incisions. A barometer of becoming boasts an overcome of pressure a modicum of pleasure on trans planets passing away through in our time. I retire my way to visqueen visions as the covering cherub is set up over my sleeping ears. This tinnitus tabulates above the threshold of silence, carries away the yogic halo. How to transcend lotus posturing Dig deeper, humility built into the lilt. The lay of the land allows for each unfolding seed. And then second column. Attention concentrates the conscious mind, 
solidifying it until it unfolds like any pouch turned inside out, an eon of self becomes self-same. The field's furrows gray in the winter of discontent, an inner life deluged from without, a tinnitus of the soul, that ring which disallows silence, finally, unnoticed, takes its place. Contemplate its underpins immersed in sound of sea wash. And then I will finish up with last poem for someone. I have so little to say, even my silence, idiotically pantomiming utterance, blathers on meaninglessly. Thank you. Um, so I think that is uh, going to do it for this week. Um, I hope you have enjoyed it. And um, there's probably at least one more week of readings. <laughs> we'll have to see what happens when I dig through the 1992 binder. <laughs> Um, so yeah, between now and then next time we get together, um, take care of yourselves and, uh, I've been listening to Duke Ellington, uh, this week and Duke Ellington always closed his concerts by telling the audience, you're, you're beautiful. You're all very special and, and we do love you madly. So I would like to echo Duke Ellington. And uh, goodbye for now. Take care.